Hello, uh, Uwesen.net again. I have a new machine here. This is my latest find from eBay. And it's a Sinclair ZX Spectrum. So I've been uh, on the lookout for this machine for quite some time and I finally got one from a UK seller. Uh, I don't know if it works, but uh, first thing I'm going to do is to uh, swap out the power adapter for uh, the Norwegian style or e EU plug. And then I'm going to test the machine if it works. and. I'll do some uh, other retro stuff as well. So the machine came with the power supply and uh, the manual and a couple of uh, tapes. So my plan for this video is to test the machine if it works, uh, try to load some tape from cassette and uh, do the regular cleaning as I always do. Let me just start by removing this strange uh, UK plug, uh, which in fact uh, has a fuse uh, inside, which is uh, not common here in Norway. So, okay, and then I got this uh, new one here. Okay, that's it, I think. Now that I've changed the power plug, I could uh, test the Sinclair, but uh, before I do that, I just plug it in and uh, measure the voltage uh, on the output. All right, so it's, uh, it's quite noisy. I uh, never heard a power supply that uh, put out that much uh, noise. The Sinclair ZX Spectrum uh, uses a 9 volt DC input. So uh, I'm gonna measure now. Okay, it measures uh, 14.3 volts and that is a bit too much, I think. Just to compare, I uh, got out uh, this uh, other power supply to my uh, ZX81, and, which is also a 9 volt power supply. And it gives 13 0.2 which is a bit high too I don't know if this is normal or not I have used the ZX81 power supply without problems so uh, and also I just read about the Sinclair power supplies of this kind they are uh, unregulated power supply which means they give out a higher voltage uh, when they are not under load so according to what I read uh, on the internet, there should be no problem uh, using these uh, power supplies, even if it's uh, about 14 volts DC. I hooked the ZX Spectrum up to my TV and I'm ready to test, so here goes nothing. Okay. I read uh, Sinclair Research Limited. Like my ZX81, the, the picture coming from the TV modulator of this machine is very unstable, it seems like. Let me just try and uh, tune in my TV. 
Uh, like the ZX81, uh, this machine doesn't have a power switch, so you just plug in the power directly. And uh, it only has uh, three outputs, one for uh, or one input line for the microphone, one output for uh, sound, and one output for uh, the TV, which is an RF modulated signal. And also it has it has an expansion port. So I guess this is as good as I get it. Um, the machine is working and uh, the keyboard seems to be working uh, fine. A common issue with this machine is that uh, the keyboard membrane which sits underneath the rubber keys uh, is damaged after some years and have to be replaced but uh, that's, that does not look to be the case here interesting uh, I thought that maybe my TV wouldn't dis display the colors but uh, colors looks uh, fine here <laughs> just change the border just uh, typing a small program. All right. Next thing I want to do is to uh, open up the machine and uh, inspect the inside and uh, do some cleaning. The ZX81 had uh, screws hidden uh, underneath the rubber feet. So I wonder if this is the case with the, the Spectrum as well. All right. So here are uh, two ribbon cables uh, attached to the motherboard. Let me just gently uh, remove those the inside of the machine looks uh, okay so far this is the TV modulator here's a large uh, heat sink uh, there are uh, some uh, empty uh, sockets here, which I uh, suppose is for RAM upgrades. And this is the speaker. Uh, let me remove the motherboard from the case so I can clean the case. And it's just one screw that holds it uh, to the bottom case. At first glance, the backside of the board looks okay, but I will inspect it uh, more detailed uh, later. The motherboard looks uh, very nice, nothing leaked. Uh, all the capacitors looks okay so I don't think there's much to do here to improve this machine so I just use a little contact cleaner to to clean the contacts and the oxidation I cleaned the bottom case in, uh, in soap water and uh, now I'm going to clean the keyboard with some isopropanol um, just to remove all the uh, grease and stuff. All right, the machine is uh, clean inside out and uh, 
I am going to assemble uh, the motherboard back into the case which is just one screw so that's easy one next is the power supply I want to take a look inside and uh, see if I can see anything wrong okay okay as expected a very big uh, transformer here so all the solder points look fine so yeah it's a simple uh, construction for a power supply and the cap looks okay too the Sinclair ZX Spectrum was released in the UK in 1982 after uh, the ZX81 and it sold about 5 million units. The ZX uh, Spectrum has the uh, same CPU as the ZX81 but it's a faster one, Silog Z80A running at 3.5 MHz. Uh, originally the memory was uh, 16 kilobyte uh, but it was uh, later uh, 48 and 128k uh, the ZX Spectrum runs the Sinclair basic uh, video output is only uh, from the RF modulator uh, and it has uh, uh, 8 colors and 256 times 192 pixels uh, there was uh, quite a competition between uh, Sinclair and uh, Commodore uh, in the beginning of the 80s and uh, one thing that uh, Commodore had uh, much better uh, capabilities is the sound. Uh, the ZX Spectrum only had a built-in beeper uh, uh, with the one channel and 10 octaves. So what I'm going to do next is to do the composite video mod. Uh, this machine only has a RF modulator which gives a pretty poor image on uh, uh, new TVs. So uh, the mod uh, is about uh, removing uh, this function and uh, feeding the composite video signal out instead. The video that comes from the computer is in fact composite uh, video and it uh, comes in through this uh, wire here and uh, this wire here is the 5 volt input to the TV modulator. So the trick is to uh, cut this wire and uh, feed this wire directly to the, uh, to the output here. I start by just removing the lid of the TV modulator. Uh, I did a composite mod on my uh, ZX81 machine uh, previously in another video and on that machine I used a transistor and, uh, and a resistor. Uh, however, this modification here is uh, much easier. It uh, doesn't involve any uh, transistor or other modification. Usually I don't want to do any modifications to my machines. I, I want them uh, to be original but uh, in this case I think it's okay but I try to make my mods reversible so I don't want to cut the wires here. I'm going to desolder them so it can be reversed later. So it is a kind of uh, tricky to desolder and remove the wire at the same time with only two hands, but uh, I give it a shot. Okay. So then I just bend uh, the loose wires over so that they're not in the way of anything. Uh, the next step now is to uh, desolder this uh, resistor here which goes to the video out. Again it's a bit tricky. 
to get a grip on the resistor wire but uh, So now I just move this over. The final step is to uh, feed a wire from this uh, solder point here through the uh, hole here and to the output connector pin. So I have prepared a small wire here which I'm going to use to feed through the hole. Okay, that's next challenge is to get the wire through the hole and the wire came nicely through the hole and I have soldered it on the back side here so that looks uh, okay. This is how it looks on the other side and uh, the cable is uh, or the small wire is through and I'm going to solder it on the output pin for the Okay, that looks uh, good, so let me solder on the wire here. Okay. Okay, that's it for the composite uh, mod, so let me just put the lid back on and uh, then I'm gonna test if it works. If you want to test a composite video on a television, uh, you can use uh, this kind of a SCART adapter which has both input and output and uh, it uh, has an input line here for composite video. Okay, I just uh, connect the, the composite video signal through the wire to the SCART and then I just power it on. So the video came through the RF modulator to the channel C36. Okay, let me switch over to SCART input on my television. All right, yeah, that uh, actually worked and uh, the picture is very stable and clear. So I can type anything uh, now since I have disconnected the keyboard, but uh, as you can see, the uh, signal uh, is very good and uh, quality of the picture is excellent. Uh, it doesn't show that good when filming from a screen with the camera, but uh, I think this is uh, amazing. Alrighty, I have assembled the machine and um, now I need to test some games or programs on it. This machine can load games from uh, tape uh, through this uh, input output lines here, mic and ear. However, I don't have a tape player right now, so I wonder how am I going to load games. However, I have uh, something more modern here, which is a uh, mobile phone running Android. And uh, I found an app called Play Set X. And uh, this app is supposed to let you uh, uh, load games, which you download to the phone, onto uh, a ZX Spectrum. And here you can uh, browse through the list of uh, games, several hundreds, I think. So uh, let me try this one, Fruit Machine. And if you press play, it will play the signal as it is saved on a tape. So I got this audio cable and connected to the to the mic 
I guess, since it, uh, it's input. Uh, then the other end I connect to the phone. And then I type the load command. And let me play this one. No, that did not seem to work. I guess uh, you have to um, adjust the volume or something. I don't know. Okay, I've been fiddling a bit with the app. However, it doesn't work. Um, seems uh, that this old uh, Android phone I have is uh, giving it too uh, low output signal. So uh, I have to try something else. So instead I'm trying uh, using this uh, iPad and uh, I found a web page that even has the has some uh, WAV files to play. So I'll try this one. So let me just uh, select something random here, uh, Lazy Jones. Okay, and then I enter the load command and play. Okay, it found a program, Lazy Jones. Okay, <laughs> so uh, then it uh, reset itself. <laughs> so it seems the volume from the iPad is uh, good enough. However, it doesn't load. It just loads for a while and then it either crashes or show this error message, uh, RAM top no good. So loading a program from the iPad did not succeed, so I'll do one more try with my MacBook Air. So this is the modern technology serving as a host for the old timer from the 80s. Again I am entering the load command. And now I'm gonna play the WAV file through um, iTunes on my MacBook on max volume. Yeah, looks promising. Phone program defender. Okay, yes. Uh, it actually loaded uh, without error. <laughs> Fantastic. So it seems like I found a German version of uh, some Defender game. So let me try another one. Hard lines. All right. And here's the basic code for the dart game. The ZX Spectrum load the programs as expected and seems to be working just fine. So I got a, a kit of capacitors to recap this, this machine from the Retroliam UK. So I think next is to swap out all the capacitors. If you don't know what recapping is, it is the process of uh, replacing the old capacitors with the new ones. And the reason for doing that is because the old capacitors uh, can dry out or they can start leaking and uh, thus start failing and damaging the rest of the board. I sorted them by size. These are the 622 microfarad capacitors and two 100 microfarads. And then there's three 1 microfarad and one 4.7 microfarad. So I have uh, set up my equipment and I'm now ready to do some recapping. I'm not gonna bore you with uh, the whole process of uh, 
replacing all uh, the capacitors so uh, I might skip forward I'll start by uh, replacing these two 100 microfarad capacitors and it's important to notice the direction of the capacitor uh, it's marked on one side with a, a minus and an arrow and that means that this side is the negative side so if you get it wrong uh, it won't work So then it's important to uh, have the right direction, you, the uh, circuit board says plus on this side and minus on this side, so yeah. And then bend the legs on the other side just to keep the capacitor in place and the other one has the opposite uh, direction the other side looks like like this and the legs are ready to be um, uh, soldered but before that I use a little bit of, uh, of uh, soldering uh, fluid just to make the solder tin uh, flow more easily. So next I just uh, snip off the legs as short as possible okay this board uh, has now got uh, brand new capacitors uh, everywhere and uh, uh, one more thing I'm gonna do before I test is to uh, put on some uh, heat sinks on the chips well putting heat sinks uh, on the ICs was uh, a terrible idea this uh, case is so low profile so they Actually, they, they don't fit, so I have to remove them. Finally, let me test if the machine still works. This is always exciting after doing some soldering work on computers. All right, yeah, it still works. So uh, I think I uh, did not do anything wrong and that's good. Okay, this is it for uh, this ZX Spectrum. Um, I uh, managed to clean it up and uh, and uh, I also did some future proofing by recapping and uh, tested that everything works as expected. Uh, so thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.